Hello, this is Angela again. And today I want to speak about the power in the word of God. Before I begin, I want to pray. Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you that it is possible to share something about your word here on the Zoom. I thank you for the technique which made, makes it possible. And I ask you, give me your Holy Spirit that you are leading me and leading my words and thoughts and all those who are listening, that they also will get to understand it with your Holy Spirit because sometimes we do have really big problems to understand your word, but you can help us. And I thank you for this. And thank you for everyone who is listening. Bless these words. This I pray in the almighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Good. Um, when I was about 17 years old, I was thinking the Bible is a um, fairy tale. I went to school, so not high school, but something similar. And an upper school, it, is, it was an upper school. And I was taught in this way. My father, he was an atheist. He didn't believe in God. I had a stepmother. She was Catholic. She was believing in God. And when I was a little girl, she was always praying with me. And this helped me a lot in my life. But at that time, I was thinking, oh, no. The Bible is not true. I don't believe in it. But one day when I was about 17, 17 and a half, I was thinking, what if it is true? What then? And then I began to read the first verses in the Bible. And this is Genesis. It's about the creation of heaven and earth. And I know there are many discussions about this. But let's read what there is, what you can read there. And I was thinking, okay, I take everything what I read, that it is truth. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. And I stopped. I was thinking, okay, I'm thinking everything, everything is true. And then I said, thought, wow, God made heaven and earth. And there was nothing, properly nothing good on the earth. It was, as it says, without form and void. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. The Spirit of God. And then God said, let there be light. And there was light. I was thinking, if it is in this way, that the Bible is true, then it has to be from the first to the last page. And I was, I was very astonished and very, very impressed about it. But it took a long, long time until Jesus, I at last found Jesus. But I was really impressed. I was thinking, wow, this is a real new thought for me. Because there is power in the word of God. Let's see what the Bible says. Through what agency did God create the heavens? This is Psalms 33, 6 to 9. I will just find it. Sorry, I'm impressed to do it. 33. And here I'm just looking up. Six to nine, by the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. He gathers the waters of the sea together as in heap. He lays up the depths in storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. And verse nine, for he spoke and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. You see, and sons. 148, verse 5. It's always good to have a paper form in hand. 
Let them praise in the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. You see, he's commanding and it is happening. He says the word and it happens. He orders some things and his holy angels will do this and will also impress human beings to do his will. The Lord is holding the whole world in his hands, you know, the Negro uh, gospel or spiritual song, song but it's, he holds the whole world in his hands. And this is true. Everything that is happening here on earth, he knows it and he's controlling it. There is an, I think it is called antagonistic power who wants to work against it. Therefore, we do have so much trouble at the moment. But he is holding everything. He's keeping you and me in his and loving, kindly hand. He has created us and he is loving you and me. What does Christ uphold by oh, sorry, by what does Christ uphold all things? This is Hebrews 1, verse 3. Upholding all things by the word of his power. You see? There's power in the word of God. Why were the people astonished at Christ's teaching? Teachings. When Jesus was here on earth, living as a human being, he was teaching a lot and he was preaching and he was healing the people, the sick ones and uh, Lazarus and uh, the young man of nine. Both were resurrected from death. He is almighty. But it is Luke first 4, verse 32. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for his word was with power. His word was with power. If you want to experience his words kindly, try to begin to read the Bible in one of the four uh, chapters in the New Testament. Then you see Jesus' life. And there's a really good book, which I would emphasize, which is called The Desire of Ages. It is warming the heart when you are reading it under prayer out of the Bible. What testified to the power of the word of Christ? This is Luke 4, verse 36. And they were all amazed and spake among themselves, saying, What a word is this? For with authority and power, he commanded to the unclean spirits, and they come out. He's also having power about um, over the unclean spirits, the demons. Some people are really demon possessed, and they, they say it. And uh, the Lord is having power over it. If you have problems with it, kindly pray to the Lord. How did God heal his people anciently? It is Psalm 107, verse 20. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. He is doing it. He has also had me and many other people. And um, you may think, yeah, but not me. Yes, he can do it. Sometimes there are some uh, conditions. But uh, the Lord is good. I'm trying to find another verse. I think it is here, Maya 17. That's your 13. Yes, you can ask him. Um, Hear me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved, for thou art my praise. This is the Lord. It is not us. Everybody can praise the Lord for the things he's doing for us. This was Jeremiah 17, verse 14. How did the centurion show his faith in the power of Christ's word to heal? The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. Matthew 8, 8. And Jesus was very amazed and astonished about the faith of this centurion. That he said, speak only one word and my servant shall be healed. And in this way it happened. The servant was healed at the same time when Jesus spoke. 
the seed of God's word working in us. What did Christ say is the seed of the kingdom of God? This is Luke 8, 11. The seed is the word of God. It is like a plant when you're putting some plant into the earth. There are some conditions which have to be there that it can be growing. If, it, if you are doing it in winter, when it is cold outside, there won't grow anything. But the seed is the word of God. When you have a heart prepared to receive the word of God, it will go and grow and come up and it will have fruit, fruit unto eternal life. Where should the word of God of Christ dwell? This is First Thessalonians 2 verse 13. That the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Therefore, it is so important to study the Bible, especially in the mornings when it is calm and nobody is disturbing us. And we are preparing for the day because often the Lord is comforting us through his word and helping us to resist evil tendencies or evil temper or I don't know what. But he will help you. And you can say, dear Lord, you have said this and this. And he will do it. We have, sometimes there are some conditions to do that what the Lord asks us to do. But he will help us. And also somebody, if he is um, doubting and says, I don't know if Jesus and, and God does exist, then you can pray, dear Lord, show me that you are there. Help me in this respect or in that condition in which you are. I don't know, but he knows. He knows your heart. He knows your... Um, that you're yearning after him, after his love. He knows it. You can go to him and ask him. And you don't need to have a, a written prayers. You can pray with your heart and he hears, hears you. But first, Thessalonians 2 verse 13. For this cause also thank me God without ceasing because when you received the word of God, which you heard of us, you received it not as the word of man, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. You see, the word of God is working in us. It is leading us to repentance and to see, oh, this way is not so good. It won't be good to do this or that. And, and he is doing that. The word of God is doing that, but the Lord wants, wants to have done, and he will accomplish it. What nature is imparted through the promises of God? This is 2 Peter 1, 4, which is also in the New Testament. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. This whole chapter is very, very good. But we may be, we may, may, be, may become partakers of the divine nature. Nothing which is disturbing us, which makes us sad about ourselves, bad temper, other things. This can the Lord do. And I would like to read one thing more that you will get happy about it, because in these unstable times, we don't know how to survive. This second Peter one. No, I think they this first Peter. Oh, I have to find it again. Wait a minute, please. Oh, I can't find it now. Ah, it's a second Peter. Chapter one, yeah, sorry. According as his, it is from verse three, according as his divine power has given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, to the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. He's giving us all that pertains unto life. This I'm just experiencing. The Lord is so good. 
there's a lady in the neighborhood and I talked with her and she said, you know what, I have so many food. Do you want to have some? And now she has given me some. It is so much that is good enough also for other families that they also get their share. Because these unstable times are terrible and many people are thinking about, oh, how do I survive? Kindly study, study this chapter, Second Peter 1. It will help you. It will lead you to Jesus and to his love and what he wants us to do and how we should become in our character. But also, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And I want to thank you, the, thank the Lord for his help that is helping us. By what are believers made clean? Now, ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. John 15, verse 3. The word is giving us to become partakers of the divine nature. We are clean through his word. It is dwelling in us and doing, uh, wait a moment, effectually workers in us who are believing. You see what the word of God is doing in us. How may a young man cleanse his way? What can also be an old one? What if we have a wrong way, a wrong start in us? Some people are judging us. Saying, oh, this one, he's a drunkard. Or oh, she, she is perhaps taking drugs or living in uh, unstable circumstances, always changing the partner. And I don't know what, but the Lord, he can help us. His word is doing the Lord's goodwill. It is not by our own, we can't, but the Lord can. Therefore, I will read it, Psalm 119, verse 9. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word. If you are looking on his word, because it is a correction um, for us, to see, oh, this is not good what I'm doing. And often we don't think about it. Many people don't think about what they are doing to the others or to themselves. But the Lord, he is correcting us. Let's take heed according to the word of God. He will lead us the, the safe way, the right way to heaven. And he will help us with his almighty Power we can't, but God can. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word? What power has the word when hidden in the heart? This is Psalm 119, verse 11. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. You see, when the word is in us and working effectually, and the plan of addition, like we find in Second Peter chapter 1, it will also help us when we are hiding the word in our hearts that we won't sin against God. And here's also reference, Psalm 17, verse 4. Just find it. Seventeen, verse 4. Concerning the works of men, by the word of thy lips, lips, I have kept me from the paths of the destroyer. What's that with the destroyer? It can be an evil person. It can be um, mighty foes, which are in this world. But when we are hiding, hiding the Lord's word in our hearts, we will helping us. He will help us not to sin against God and we won't go on the path of the destroyer. Um, there's also one more. Let me see. Wait a moment, I'm thinking on it. I think it is Proverbs 1. Hmm. 
No, it's time for it. This is coming to my mind and therefore I'm looking for it. Can you bear with me? Yes. It is Psalms 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law that he meditate day and night. And why? And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doth shall prosper. Mm -hmm. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Because for the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Therefore, we shall we have wisdom. This was Psalm 1. To walk on in the way of the Lord. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. And in Proverbs, there's a lot to talk about wisdom, the first chapters. Kindly study them prayerfully. A wise man, this is for example, Proverbs 1 verse 5. A wise man will hear and will increase learning. And a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsel. You see, this is the Lord. He is doing this in, in us. And when we are, are having questions, kindly I ask a Christian person to help you and that you may pray together, study the Bible, and he can give you some counsel on the Holy Spirit. Therefore, it is always good to, to pray before and after the um, Bible study because the Lord, he will reveal you some very special and personal and interesting things and you will be amazed you will see it the lord may bless you now at the end i want to pray dear lord jesus i thank you so much for your loving kindness and your words which we may hide in our hearts i ask you for this let us hide your words in our hearts sometimes it is cutting through and it is hurting but on the other side, it will help us to see right because we need your eyes to see what is truth and what is wrong, what is the right way. And kindly let your word be in our hearts that it will work effectually that you want us to become and be and also doing the right things, going and walking on the way of eternity because you will soon come back in there clouds of heaven that everybody may see you. I thank you. Give us your love and your patience and your Holy Spirit that you are leading us and protect us all against the evil angels, angel agencies in this world. This I pray in the almighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you very much. You may have a blessed day and the Lord may help you. Until next time. Bye-bye.